Good morning Kings and welcome to what is our very first online service in August. Can you believe that we're in August already? That is just absolutely crazy. Listen, my name is Matt, this is my wife Judith and we're so pleased that you're joining us today. Yeah, we want to give you such a warm welcome. We are one church in six locations. So if you're joining us this morning from the Persian campus, Gateshead, Blackpool, Wigan, Salford, Bolton, you guys are so welcome this morning. That's right, yeah. And as you're joining us on YouTube or Facebook or on the King's website, we want you to get involved this morning. We want you to comment. We want you to like it. We want to share it with your world. And you never know, you might even be sat in your front room this morning with some real people enjoying church together. That's what we're going to be doing as a family today. And we're so excited to be sharing church in with real people again. It's so <laughs> cool. Get involved. Come on. Awesome, guys. So you come on, the countdown's nearly finished. You've only got a little bit of time to grab your brew, your Bible, your notepad. And as soon as you've done that, draw close, draw, lean in, get something from God today and really um, hear his voice speaking to you. That's right. We love you guys. We can't wait to see you all soon. But enjoy it this morning. Sit back, relax and have a fantastic day. We look forward to seeing you all soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. don't know my name is Connor and I'm Naomi <laughs> and we're from our Bolton campus listen we are so glad that you've chosen to tune in to us this morning whether you are from one of our campuses or you are tuning in for the very first time we uh, welcome you we do. yes Naomi can you believe we are in the first Sunday of August how has that happened I can't believe it it's how crazy did we get here how did we get crazy. here it is crazy, but we want to start off this service today with a game. Well, it's not really a game, it's more like fun interaction. We want yep. to start it off with fun because we know that there is no giant CV on this morning. But what mm. we do know, you've got Connor Khan yes, right here do. right now. So, free. kids, you can join in with this too because I know you'll have had Zoom meetings too. So we want to know, in these five months of lockdown, there's been a lot of Zoom calls, hasn't there? Mm. We want to know... What has been your biggest Zoom fail? Yeah. Biggest yeah. Zoom fail you've had one, haven't you, Connor? Yeah, I've, I've been that person. I fell asleep on a Zoom call. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you which one. Tell us which one, Connor. No, okay. <laughs> I really can't. Everybody <laughs> message Connor Harms so I can find out which one it was. I'm joking. You know, I knew this, um, know this story of this woman that thought if you muted your Zoom, it turned off the camera. So she was on a work meeting, she turned off um, Sound and took the Zoom calls to the toilet. Oh, no. oh, <laughs> and it was a full staff meeting, and she thought a camera it was off. It weren't Alison Worsley, were it? <laughs> no, it wasn't Alison Worsley. Are you sure? So let us know down in the comments what Zoom fail you have had over these past few months. I bet there's absolutely loads in there. I bet there's loads. Yeah, I think I've been quite lucky to be fair. Just for one <laughs> yeah, part. Just one. There's been times where I've been drifting off. <laughs> but anyway, I just want to um, start us off right this morning before we 
carrying into our service and start uh, any worship and stuff. So I just want to share something from the book of Lamentations. It's found in chapter 3 and verse 22. And it says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases and his mercies never end. They are new every morning and great is your faithfulness. And I just think that's incredible. You know, we serve a God who is faithful. We serve a God whose love is steadfast for us. It doesn't run out. It's endless. There's no end to it. But it also says his mercies are new every morning. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but we've been doing this now, uh, church in this way for quite a while now. It's almost become a new normal. And it's been really easy to just get so used to it and get so caught up and we know we're going to hear someone be speaking and someone's going to um, say a few things for a bit and blah, blah, blah. And it can be so easy to get caught up in that routine. I just want to challenge this morning. Let's align our posture with uh, heaven this morning. Let's yeah. sit up in our spirit and pay attention and wake up. Why? Because God wants to do a new thing this yeah, morning. Yes. His mercies are new every day. His yeah. love is unchanging. And his grace is unchanging. But his mercies every morning, it says they are new. So today, let's just make a decision to... Um, press in, not um, let familiarity consume us this morning mm. and let's get too relaxed in our, in our homes while we're watching church. Let's sit up and get ready to worship and press into what God wants to speak to us about yeah. this morning. Amen, let's pray. Jesus, we thank you this morning for firstly who you are, that we yeah. serve a God whose love is steadfast for us. No matter who we are, what we've done, where we come from, Jesus, you love us with yeah. all of your heart. Yeah, so you much, God. That you, that you died for us. And mm. Jesus, I pray over every person watching this morning, every campus watching this morning, Jesus, that they know and have a new revelation this morning of your love for them, Jesus. We pray, yeah. God, that everybody presses into you this morning, mm. Jesus, that they posture themselves well in order to hear from you today because yeah. you, God, have something that you want to speak over our church this morning. So we thank you, God. We love you, Jesus, with all of our hearts. And we pray that we have a great morning in Jesus. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Have a great morning church. Let's worship together. I searched the world but it couldn't fill me. Brains and treasures to fade are never enough. But you came along, and put me back together, and every desire is now satisfied here in your love.
We're going to interview a great family from our King's Blackpool campus and we want to welcome uh, this morning the Sutton family. We give you a big round of applause, the Suttons. Good morning. Um, we've got Mark and uh, we've got young Lucas. You're already growing on me Lucas because I do like that shirt. Show me your badge quickly. For those who don't know it's the Man United badge and we've got lovely mum who's Rachel, and Rachel is a health worker, a education worker in the nurseries in Blackpool, and Mark has his own uh, business for DIY. So for the wider campus, if you want any DIY doing, call yeah. Matt Sutton or come by and me. So Mark, just introduce um, yourself briefly and how long you've been in Kings, etc. Uh, yeah, it's same now. My name's Mark Sutton. I've uh, been in Kings for, say, almost four years now um yeah it's been fantastic best, best move we've ever made um this is my wife rachel hi <laughs> and this is lucas and how old are you lucas yeah. you go to school in blackpool i guess yeah oh brilliant i'm just interested to see how families operate during lockdown I know it can be quite stressful at times, but I know that we, my family, we've had some great laugh moments. Can you give me one really humorous moment that you've had as a family? Mark, just tell us about that. Um, well, I'd, I'd say probably I spent a lot more time with Lucas and obviously because he's on the go constantly, uh, I've been very creative with him. So one of the things we were doing was making model planes and, and he said to me, Dad, can you make a plane? I says, yeah. He says, oh, can you make a plane so we can go to Tenerife? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <That's hilarious. laughs> well, I can count for that because we, we, all, we all need a good suntan, that's for sure. And now yeah. we can do, of course, you can start booking flights all over certain parts of Europe. So, Rachel, I mean, I know you're always a, an avid watcher and a contributor on the online uh, church um, services, particularly on Sunday. What's been the most important standout moment I really enjoyed? Um, oh, for me, I, I really enjoy the worship. I love singing and belting that out and letting the neighbours hear it <laughs> as we're worshiping. And um, probably really hearing the amazing words that come through it uh, and the testimonies. And I guess, you know, what have you learned as a family? That, that's what I'm really interested to know because you've been together for 12, 14 weeks, you've been on for a long. 
you, you, you told me that before today. Uh, what have you learned as a family over this time? Uh, learn to be patient and learn to live with each other, I suppose, because we spent that much time together. <laughs> Which is obviously with the busy world we have, it's uh, unusual. So yeah, that's uh, it's definitely been a good thing. You are the stick. You're the glue of the family. You pull things together. Tell us how you kept God at the centre of the family over the last twelve weeks. Um, really, sort of spending making more time really to for daily devotionals and prayer and praying together. And the main thing really for us sort of being thankful for what we've got, the protection we've had and, um, you know, focusing on what we have got and not what we haven't got um, and just enjoying being together as a family, really. That's really good. I'm, I'm interested in what families are going to be doing over the last couple of weeks before lockdown's completely lifted. Um, give us some encouragement what families can do together to be connected with Kings. Right, well, Kings has loads on that we can get involved with, which is great. We've got Tuesday nights with our connect groups where you can uh, personally talk together uh, and pray and discuss what's been said in the Word on the Tuesdays. That's great, having that conversation. We've got a uh, table talk, which has been loads of really great stuff that's come through on that that we've been able to watch and listen to. And um, we've also got prayer and fast days, which is brilliant. The more people that can get involved with that, because there's real power in prayer. And I think the more that are praying, more that come together in prayer, I think it will move mountains. Well, listen, I really enjoyed our short interview. But I want to say on behalf of Kings as a whole, and for me, one of the pastors at Kings Blackpool, I just thank you for all you do for us. You know, if anything needs doing, Mark's always there putting his hand up. I know you're ready to get involved in everything that we do. We thank you. We bring honour to you and your family. Big shout out to the Suttons. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And God bless. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. So great to hear um, from our families across our King's campuses and just to hear their stories. I'm going to talk now, just before we go into worship, about God being a beyond God. He goes beyond our wildest dreams. It says in Ephesians 3 verse 20 that God can do immeasurably more than we can ask, think or imagine. And I like to think that that God is a God of going beyond, beyond what we ask, beyond giving. He goes beyond just doing the minimum. God went beyond in his sacrifice. Jesus sacrificed and went beyond. He took on our sins and our sicknesses and he went through a lot of pain and rejection and abandonment. And he went beyond what was the minimum, what was just necessary. He went beyond that. He didn't stop there. He went beyond in his love and his giving. The Bible says that he lavishes good things on us. He gives us so many good gifts. The Bible is a book full of promises. In fact, the Bible is full of promises so much there's 8,000 and more promises in the Bible. And out of those 8,000 promises, the one subject that there's more promises than anything else about is the area of giving. God is a giving God. He goes beyond in his giving. And some promises in the Bible are conditional and some are unconditional. Promises like the fact that Jesus is going to come back again is unconditional. He's going to do that, that's a promise. But there's some um, promises in the Bible that are conditional, depending on whether we trust God. And this is at a time that we're in right now where we've got a challenge to trust God in difficult times. And God loves to see us do that as his children because as we do that we become more like him and I wonder this morning in your giving can you think like God and go beyond maybe the norm or the minimum and go beyond in your giving just like God did because the Bible is full of promises and the Bible says that God is a promise giver but he's a promise keeper and he wants us to trust him in difficult times with the promises and there's so many 
promises in the word of God that I can't list them all. When we trust God in this area of giving, it makes us more like God because God is a giver. And it also attacks selfishness in us and we become more like God in that way as well. Because it's not easy to give, it goes against the natural thing, we want to keep what we've got. But as we trust God in difficult times and go beyond just like he did, there's so many promises that God will keep if we do what he says. So God bless you kings, let's just worship God right now as we go into a worship song and give to him. There's going to be instructions at the end how to give. God bless you guys. Your mercy is an even flow. 
to enter a time in our service where we hear the word of God but just before we do I want to talk to our giants because apparently I can't do anything these days without being Connor can and <laughs> I love it so giants this morning you should have had your kids connect group so why don't you give your um, connect group leader a shout out down in the comments um let us know who they are and how awesome they are because I'm sure they are all awesome. But listen, this morning, you know, God's presence is with us wherever we go and we can spend time in God's presence whenever we want to. So this morning, we want to know, where do you like to spend time with God? Where's your favourite place to do that? Is it in your bedroom? Is it in your garden? Do you have a secret den somewhere? Do you like to spend time with God on the toilet? Anywhere, but what we want you to do this morning we want you to draw a picture of your favourite place to spend time with God and, um, you know, send it into your small groups and let us, uh, let us know what, how you like to spend your time with God. So we can't wait to see what you come up with and um, how you spend time with God. Yes, so we have the absolute privilege this morning of introing our speaker, Rachel Eden. This woman speaks absolute gold. Yes, she, she is does. brilliant. So get your Bibles ready, get your notepads, grab your brew, because this is going to be an awesome word from God. So let's watch. Hi Kings, good to be with you. I'm Rachel, I'm from the Bolton campus and I get the privilege of sharing the word of God with you today and I'm really excited about this message. So let's pray and then we'll crack on. Lord, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you that your word brings powerful change in our lives. Help us to have listening ears and open hearts. And I pray that your word will transform us. Amen. Great. Well, I'm going to start my message by saying something that will probably really infuriate any parents out there who've got uh, school-aged children. And um, please don't throw things at the TV screen or throw your laptop or your iPad across the room. Here goes. I loved homeschooling. I know, I know, how annoying is that? But I'm just, I feel the need to be honest with you today about my feelings. And, um, you know, it was a bit of a shock, wasn't it, when schools first shut? But within about a day, I'd mentioned to our youngest, well, we're going to be doing a bit of homeschooling. And he was over the moon about it. He was excited. He kept asking when's, when's homeschool opening. And I felt a bit of pressure. And so we transformed our back room into a classroom. And I got all my lesson plans going on. I got all my resources out. I uh, did a last minute dash to the local shop and got all this stationery. And, and I got myself ready. And we kind of role played it really. You know, I'm a former drama teacher. So if I'm going to do something, I'm just going to immerse myself fully in it. And so I became the head teacher and um, every morning I made everybody line up outside the classroom and they came in and we took the register. And surprise, surprise, I had 100% attendance. Who knew? Uh, I had two children in my class. That was it. It was a dream. And they were present every single day, which I thought was pretty good going. They had no choice. And as a head teacher, I was 100% present because I had nowhere else to go and nothing else to do with my life. We also drafted in a supply teacher called Mr. Eden and he joined us every so often and he was a PE teacher and the art teacher and also he did advanced maths. So basically whenever we got to beyond year one maths, I kind of called in the supply maths teacher because it got a little bit too difficult for me. And sometimes he had to go to his other job uh, and so he was absent for the day. Um, but we knew where he was, that he'd be back soon. And I don't know what your school attendance was like, whether you were 100% present, uh, whether you missed some uh, days, whether you were like me and you skived PE and pretended you had choir practice. Who knows? But um, 
In education, we know that being present is really important. If you're not present, then you're not learning and you're not in the right environment to, to grow and develop. And uh, I want to ask you a question today. And it's quite a deep question about God and maybe a question that lots of people are asking. And this is the question. Is God present in our world? And is he present in your life? I wonder if some people through this crazy year that we've had so far have been asking, where is he? And is God absent? <laughs> you know, because I don't see what's happening really. But I want to say to you that, that God is fully present in our world. And he's not just present, you know, like physically. <laughs> I don't know about you, but in school, sometimes I was present, but not really present, if you know what I mean. I was present in body, but not always present in my mind and in my focus. God is not like that. He is fully, all in, all present. And in fact, this Bible teaches us, you can see it through the whole of the Bible from Genesis through to Revelation, it's all about the presence of God and God being fully present for his people, right from before the world was created and he was hovering over the waters, the spirit was hovering and God created the world. And then we see this up and down journey with his people throughout the whole Old Testament where he was always present for them. But they were, sometimes they loved him, sometimes they didn't, they were up and down. And we come to the New Testament where we see this most incredible moment where God comes to earth in the form of a baby. The incarnation. We see Jesus born as a baby and God becoming a human and being even more present with us than he ever had been. We could, as human beings, see what God was like. We could see him in human form. He modelled to us what it's like to, to be God and to be compassionate to this world. And then Jesus goes through the cross, gives his life and ascends back to heaven after the resurrection. And then it, the early church wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit, which is God in all his power and in all his presence in his people. And the church just explodes and the presence of God is taken out to all the ends of the earth. And the promise in Revelation at the end of the Bible is that our future, if we know Jesus, is absolutely incredible. Because we're going to be fully present with our God as he's present with us forever and ever. And it's going to be perfect. And so I wonder today whether you feel that Jesus is present with you. Because I think we could probably as a church tell countless stories of when Jesus has been present in our lives. I was reading a book this week and uh, the, the intro to the book is written by Bear Grylls. And I'm sure you know who Bear Grylls is. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to describe him, but he's an adventurer or he's an explorer. He's a crazy outdoor kind of guy. He does dangerous stuff and makes it look easy. And I don't know if you know, but Bear, Bear Grylls is um, a Christian and he writes in this introduction to the book about three key moments in his life where he felt the presence of Jesus and the first one was when he was 16 and he wasn't brought up in a Christian family but he always felt like God was there and suddenly when he was 16 uh, his godfather passed away and it, he was heartbroken because he was really close to his godfather and he tells this story that he climbed this tree and he prayed a simple prayer to God and I'm just going to read it because I want to get it right it's a really simple prayer and he says if you're there, will you please be beside me? Be my friend. What a simple prayer asking Jesus to be present with him in that painful time. And then six years later, he talks about how he was jumping out of a plane with a parachute and the parachute ripped and he went hurtling to the floor thousands of feet below and he was rushed to hospital. And eventually the surgeon said that he came within a whisker of total, total paralysis and yet, you know, there was no lasting damage. He, he came out of it absolutely fine. And he says that God was with him through that just horrendous time. And then only 18 months after that, he's gone up Mount Everest. He's standing literally on the top of the world. And he's talking about what real worship is. He looks at the whole of the world and just thinks, wow, God, you made this. Aren't you just incredible? Now, I would love a story like that. Uh, and maybe you have a story like that, I certainly don't. But I love that this is a tale of Jesus being present in the ups and downs of life. 
And all right, you know, I wish I jumped out of a plane and I wish I could say I'd been to Mount Everest, but I definitely relate to that. I relate to that experience of Jesus being present in the pain and the times where something just hits you that you didn't see coming. And I relate to Jesus being present in the best possible moments in your life where you just feel like you're on top of the world. And we're going to look today just at a really brief passage in John chapter 6, if you want to start turning to it. Um, This is a passage about Jesus and his disciples. And there's a lot to learn about the presence of Jesus. It's a very short account from uh, John's Gospel. And guess what? It's, It's about a boat. And a lot of the stories that the disciples tell were about boats. And that's because they were professional fishermen. That was their world. It was their comfort zone. It's what they knew best. And, you know, let's see what what Jesus did. So we're going to read from John chapter 6, starting at verse 16. That evening, Jesus' disciples went down to the shore to wait for him. But as darkness fell and Jesus still hadn't come back, they got into the boat and headed across the lake towards Capernaum. Soon a gale swept down upon them and the sea grew very rough. They'd rowed three or four miles when suddenly they saw Jesus walking on the water towards the boat. They were terrified, but he called out to them, don't be afraid, I am here. Then they were eager to let him into the boat and immediately they arrived at their destination. So I just want to pull out four thoughts really uh, from this passage about the presence of Jesus and you know it's always good when you read in a passage from the Bible to say uh, and what happened before this let's get a bit of context what what's already gone on and this uh, section comes straight after the story of the feeding of the 5,000 this incredible miracle where Jesus just takes these little loaves and fishes from this little boy's pat lunch and multiplies it miraculously and before you know it 5,000 men plus women plus children are all having um, a slap up dinner on Jesus and the disciples must have just been on cloud nine and and even at the end of it everybody had so much to eat that there were 12 baskets left over can you imagine and straight after this um, account from the gospel uh, Jesus says right get moving And we see it in um, another chapter, another account in Matthew uh, chapter 8, actually, where it just says that uh, Jesus said, right, move, let's get in the boat, get going. And he stayed behind, so he stayed behind to send the people off. And then he went up a mountain to pray, which was often his custom to spend some time alone with his father in heaven. And the disciples jump in this boat out of obedience to Jesus and get moving. And they encounter this, this storm. And, you know, they spend most of the night furiously rowing trying to get to the other side and yet they're stuck in the middle they've it's taken them a whole night to row three or four miles and still there's another three or four miles to to go before they get to the other side and they're just right in the middle of this scenario and where is Jesus Jesus is up a mountain praying and let's just look at four four moments where we can learn something about the presence of Jesus are you ready I hope you're ready okay number one Jesus is always present, even when we don't see him. It's really important to note that that Jesus was up the mountain. And actually, in the other account, in Matthew chapter 8, the account of this story, it says that he was watching them as they rode. So although Jesus wasn't in the boat with them and he wasn't near them, he was still present in that he was watching them. And this is a picture of our God. You know, even if you are in the middle of the worst storm and you have no idea where Jesus is, the promise in the Bible is that he is still present and he's very much watching you. In fact, it's his unseen care that we have to trust him. It's interesting that the disciples had already been through another incident with a storm and a boat, but at that point, Jesus was in the boat with them. And although it must have been scary, I think they probably gained a lot of comfort from the fact that Jesus was sleeping in the boat. They woke him up, they were scared, and he brought calm. He commanded the wind and the waves to be still. So they'd already experienced this sense of fear, but when Jesus was right visible in the boat. Now this situation that we're talking about in John 6 must have stretched their faith a bit further, because it's one thing to be uh, trusting and full of faith when Jesus is right next to you and you can see him another thing to trust him when you can't see him when he's not visible 
And yet there are times in our lives where we feel like the presence of Jesus is, is so tangible, is so real. And there are other times where we feel like he could be a million miles away. But I want to encourage you to keep trusting and keep being full of faith that he still loves you. He still cares for you, even if it feels like he's at a distance. You know, he's still watching over you. This is a, a picture of the story of the gospel as well. You know, that even before you became a Christian, Jesus loved you and was going after you. And maybe you're not a Christian today. Maybe you've never come to know Jesus, but he's watching you and he sees you and he cares for you, even though you might not have any, any idea that he's there. We sing this song in church called Waymaker. It's brilliant. And there's a line that I love that talks about even when we can't see him, he's working. And that's a promise from the word of God, that Jesus is always present and he's always working even when we don't see him. So number two, Jesus walks towards us in our struggles. So the next part of the story is that then Jesus starts walking on the water, like you do, another miracle, walking towards them in the middle of this storm. I don't know, I try and picture that. I don't know whether he was kind of like almost surfing on the top of the waves or whether he was walking through the waves, I don't know how it happened, but he walked towards them and towards the boat. And this is a picture for me of how Jesus reaches out to us in our darkness, in our, in our struggles, in our troubles. He makes the first move. The Bible says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, which means that we've not earned his love and his care, but even when we're in the middle of a right mess, he makes the first move and he's the one that takes the initiative and says, I'm coming for you and I'm reaching out to you. And that's what happened. And I just think the disciples must have just thought, oh, thank goodness for that. Jesus is here. I mean, they were scared at first. <laughs> they often were like terrified. They thought it was a ghost. But as soon as he says, do not fear, I'm here. In another version, it says, it is I. As soon as he makes himself known, it's me, it's Jesus, I'm here. The relief that they must have felt. Jesus is here, it's going to be all right. And you know, even when we're in the middle of a storm, it makes a big difference when Jesus is present in that storm with us. He reaches out to us. And number three, Jesus enters our hearts and lives in response to our welcome. So again, one of the other Gospels, when, they, when it talks about this story, it says that Jesus walked towards them and then made to go past them, which I think is hilarious. Almost like, hi guys, see you in a bit. You know, almost like, no, where are you going, Jesus? Jesus, come back, we need you. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what that was about. Um, but what we read in this account in John is that Jesus walked towards them, declared that he was there. But he didn't just jump into the boat. He didn't kind of, you know, gay crash what was going on and pu push his way in. He waited to be invited in. And thankfully, the disciples, e were, well, they were eager to let him into the boat. Well, I bet they were. And um, eagerly welcomed him in. And it was only when they eagerly welcomed him in that he entered the boat. That's a picture of, of Jesus. He never pushes his way into situations. He never storms in and just takes over and says, I know what you need. Listen to me. He's not that bossy person that just comes in and rules the roost. He's very gentle and he's very loving. He's compassionate and what he does is he waits to be welcomed in. In Revelation there's a, a verse that says, here I am, I stand at the door and knock. And it's almost that picture of Jesus knocking on the door of your life, but he doesn't fling the door open, he doesn't get his key and force his way in, he waits, he knocks and he waits. And when we open that door, he comes in to be with us. And I wonder how open you are to the presence of Jesus in your life. I think the disciples were very pleased when he got into that boat uh, because it was like, okay, Jesus is here. It's going to be all right. <laughs> and only when Jesus entered the boat did the disciples overcome the struggle. And think about it, you know, if Jesus was on the water and you were furiously rowing, having rowed all night and you were not getting anywhere and you were exhausted and you were sweaty and you were like stressed and frustrated, Imagine how stupid it would have been for the disciples just to have gone, all right, no, we're all right, we can do it, thank you very much, you're on, your, on your way. I mean, that. but do we do that sometimes in life? Do we kind of just keep rowing and rowing and rowing? Kind of trust in our own ability to get ourselves somewhere when actually what we need to do is just say, Jesus, I really, I really want to welcome you in. 
to this situation and need you. And I need your supernatural help. And that's what Jesus brought. He brought supernatural help. He brought help that wasn't accomplished by striving or working hard or furious activity. He got into the boat and everything was okay. And it's a little bit, again, a picture of, of the gospel and, and of the cross in that we as humans, no matter how hard we work to be good, how hard we work to be close to God, we cannot buy our own salvation or earn our own salvation. It's a little bit like that picture of the disciples furiously rowing, hoping for the best. I wonder if that is a picture of your life, you know, that you feel like you're rowing, you're trying, you're everything you try and it just, you feel stuck and you're not getting anywhere. And uh, there's a verse in, in the Bible, John 14, 6, that says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one gets to the Father except through me. And these are the words of Jesus. And Jesus is saying, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And so what do we do to access all of that? We open the door to Jesus. We invite him into that boat and say, actually, I give up all my striving and all my trying and all my best efforts because they do not work. Jesus, actually, I need you. And I need what you've done on the cross for me to set me free and to bring me forgiveness and to bring me into new life. And all we have to do is receive him and say, sorry for the stuff that I've done wrong. Sorry for my own stubborn independence when I've, I've not come to you, actually. Please come into this boat and please come into my life. And then he gives us his supernatural salvation, forgiveness, freedom, hope, new life. And things are never the same again. So finally, number four, Jesus assures us of a secure future. <sighs> how much do we need that? Especially with the year that we've had, how much do we need to know that it's going to be okay? That all is not lost, that Jesus is present and he's with us. And this is my favourite bit of this passage, because I don't know why, but I've read the Bible for quite a long time in my life, you know, and um, and I've probably read this a million times before, but I've never noticed how this story ends. And this is my favourite bit. So they let Jesus into the boat. It's all okay. And then it says, and immediately they arrived at their destination. This is amazing. I have never come across this miracle before or thought about it before. It's like Jesus is a divine taxi driver. It's like back to the future, like one minute you're in the middle of the lake and the next minute you've arrived on the shore. I just think, this is incredible. <laughs> so if you think the disciples had taken a whole night to get to the middle of the lake, Jesus gets into the boat and within a few seconds, boom, they arrive at the shore. I mean, being a disciple must have been amazing. That, that was just incredible. And you know, when I read this, I don't think this means that we then get everything we ever wish for when we have a relationship with Jesus. It's not that the presence of Jesus then just makes everything a breeze and we never have any struggles again. But what it means is that Jesus takes care of the destination. The disciples have tried so, so hard to get where they wanted to go. And it wasn't in their own power or strength to get them there. But then Jesus is welcomed into the boat and before they know it, He's taken care of that journey and that destination. And I think that means for us that we can let go of worrying about the future. We can let go of striving so hard to try and make things happen. Because when you walk with Jesus day by day and he's present in your life and you are fully present to him, then he takes care of the destination. What a relief that is not to have to worry about all those things. And I've already mentioned that our eternal future is secure and that's, that's the eternal destination, isn't it? But when you really kind of value the presence of Jesus in your, in your life day to day, it does change your view of the future. And you know, a few years ago, I think I let go of trying to figure out where my life was going. <laughs> In my early 20s, I had a plan. Let me tell you, I had a 10-year plan and I knew exactly what I was going to accomplish and what my life was going to look like. And then all that went out the window and I realised that 
walking with Jesus as a Christian is about adventure, it's about the unknown, it's about stepping out in faith. And actually, unless Jesus gives you a clear vision for something, which sometimes he does, but unless that happens, we actually have no clue what's ahead. And that's okay, because he knows, and he's in charge of that destination. And that's a relief, I think. And also, you know, if we're obsessed with where we're going all the time, or obsessed with what we're saving up for and what we're going to have next year and what my job is going to be like and my life is going to be like. If we're obsessed by all these things, we can take our eyes off the journey. If you're obsessed with a destination, you can miss the journey completely. And this life is a journey and being a Christian and being a disciple and a follower of Jesus is about a journey. And every day you get up and you welcome the presence of Jesus into your life. And into whatever boat you're in that day, whatever situation you're in, you say, Jesus, please come into my life today and be with me in these situations that I face. And as you walk step by step and day by day with the presence of Jesus, do you know what? The longer term things take care of themselves. God has a funny way of working behind the scenes and pulling it all together in just the incredible way that he does, in a way that we could never plan out in a million years. So let's not miss the journey because we're just bothered about getting to the other side. Let's really enjoy the presence of Jesus in our lives. So I want to ask you today where you're at. Where you're at with that presence of Jesus. You know, does it feel like he's a long way off on the mountain? Does it feel like he's walking towards you on the water? Do you feel like he's right next to you in that boat? Wherever it is, I just want to encourage you to reach out to Jesus again today. You know, if, you're already, if you already know Jesus, I want to encourage you to spend this week pushing in closer to him and really appreciating the difference that his presence makes in your life. And don't be stubborn. I am stubborn so many times where I try and handle things on my own. I'm like, I know, I know Jesus is there, but I don't like fully invite him in. I don't know why, I just think I'm independent and stubborn. And I had an experience this week where I had a little bit of conflict with somebody. Somebody had said something and, and I felt a bit upset by it. And, and I was lying away thinking about it. And because I was thinking about this message, I felt like Jesus just say, so are you gonna invite me to the boat or keep me on the water? <laughs> and I was like, yes, practice what you preach. And I just prayed, simple prayer, and I just said, yeah, Jesus, I want you to come into this situation because I know your presence makes all the difference. And, you know, the next morning I felt him prompt me to deal with the situation quickly, not to leave it like I was going to, and to be really full of grace and kindness. And, and the person that I spoke to had a brilliant attitude about it. And I felt like we really came through it in a bit of a stronger relationship and... Jesus' presence was, was in that moment. Just a really small detail of my week, but it made a big difference. So why don't you invite Jesus into the small details of your every day? And if you have never known Jesus before, or he's just somebody that you kind of see on stained glass windows and you kind of read about in, in an old dusty book and he just seems a million miles away, I want to encourage you to reach out to him and eagerly invite him into the boat of your life. You know, just say, Jesus, I do want your presence, like Bear Grylls did when he was 16 and got up that tree and prayed the simplest of prayers and just said, Jesus, would you be my friend and would you be, be beside me? That's what he prayed. How beautiful is that? Jesus, would you be beside me and would you be my friend? And that prayer has power, whether you are a small child or whether you're a person in the later years of your life sitting in a chair and just saying, Jesus, be my friend. <laughs> That's beautiful, whatever age you are and whatever you're going through. Because he's there for you and he is fully present. And I want to encourage you, just as Jesus is fully present in your life, why don't you be fully present to him? Let's just pray. Jesus, I thank you so much for your presence. Thank you that you are attentive to us, that you see us, that you watch over us, that you care for us. 
And I thank you that you are proactive in reaching out to us in our struggles and in our pain and in our highs and our lows. I thank you that you reach out to us. And today, just as we watch this, we welcome you again. We welcome you to be present in every moment of our lives. Help us to be present to you. And if there's anybody who's watching that has never invited you into their life before, Lord, just help them. Help them to open their heart and to experience what it is to have you walking beside them and being their friend. We love you so much. Church, well, what an awesome message from Rachel. Thank you so much for that, Rachel. It was so, so good and so true. You know, God is present in every situation in our lives, isn't he? And, you know, if you're watching this for the first time today or you don't know much about who Jesus is, it says in John verse 13, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved and you yeah, know if you're so feeling true. like you're in a storm right now all life's pretty good right now jesus is right present yeah. where you are and if you want to know jesus today you can do that right now yeah. right from your home so let's pray together Jesus, we thank you, God, for your word that it's so true. Jesus, we thank you that you are present in every storm, in every up and down of our life, yeah. God. And I pray for everybody watching today, Jesus, but especially those that don't know you. Jesus, I pray that we realise where we've done wrong. We say sorry, Jesus, and we accept you into our hearts, God. We thank you, God, for your everlasting love, Jesus, that it never runs out and is always there for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Great. So if you prayed that prayer with us today and you want to respond to God, you can do two things. You can head over to our website and there's a live service there now and you can click respond and one of our team will pray with you. If not, you can go to www.kingschurchlife.com slash Jesus and you can follow through the links there and one of our team will be in touch with you. Well, great stuff. What an incredible service. Listen, yes. if God's spoken to you this morning, we want to hear about it. So make sure you drop down in the comments um, yes. what you've enjoyed this morning. Yeah. Um, so just a few things that are coming up in the life of church. Uh, first of all, don't forget that we know we're not doing um, our connect groups or our table talk at um, the minute while we pause over summer but that doesn't mean that we can't still stay connected with no. each other. So please just keep in contact with everyone in your connect groups. Uh, Keep, uh, keep speaking to um, those people and keep yeah. connected. So our service is not just finished yet. After this video, we have a giving video which will show you how to give. So we encourage your church to give well this morning, yeah. to give with a good heart. It's been great to see you. We'll hopefully see you online and through the week through social media. Have a great day, church. Have a good day. Bye. Have a good week. Hey, it's great that you've joined us for our online service. During each of our online services, there will be an opportunity to give to God. If you are watching church on a TV, then you can simply scan the QR code on the screen with your smartphone to be taken to the giving page on our website. If you're watching from a mobile phone, a tablet or a computer, you will see a link in the chat that will take you to the same place. When you arrive at the giving page, scroll down to find a button saying Give Online. This will direct you to a form where you can submit your details to give. The first section on this form says, My donations are for. Click the drop down menu and select the campus you are giving to today. The next part of the form gives you two options, to donate regularly or to give a one-off donation. This is a great time to consider setting up a regular donation online if you usually give weekly in a bucket at one of our campuses. You can do that simply by filling in this section on the form. Alternatively, to give a one-off donation, type in your amount here. Following on from that, you have the gift aid section. If you are a UK taxpayer, select the checkbox and fill in your email address below. When that's done, it's a case of following the remaining instructions to complete the process. We want to thank you for your continued generosity as we gather together for King's Church Online. Thank you.